Hi, I'm Nate the Baker, and I want to show you how I converted my old bedroom into this maker's space. About a couple of months ago, I started looking for new places where I could record as well as make at the same time. That's when I decided, why not build my own maker space? As a self-proclaimed maker, I should be able to take my old bedroom and convert it into a workshop. I think using video and recording it and sharing it with you guys is a better way to see my progress as a maker instead of just using pictures and notes. That's enough talking, let's get to making. As you can see, this room is a long way from a maker space. There was plenty of stuff that I needed to find a new home for. Luckily, I was able to donate all the furniture you see to a local donation center. Almost immediately, my mind went to new tools and different things that I can make in this room, but I was a long way from there. I had to take different measurements of where I could start to store each different tool and how I was going to rearrange the room to make it a maximized maker space. As a bedroom, this is a great size, but as a maker space, it's going to be on the smaller end. And so I have to figure out how to maximize my space with workbenches and any tools that may need their own tabletop. I decided to go with the French cleat tool system, an island in the middle as my workbench, and use the closet as overflow storage space. My first step was to start to demo the room and pass the point of no return. Hands down, the scariest part of the project. For the French cleats, I knew I was going to have to remove the trim, and so I had to remove it all around the room to keep it consistent. Luckily, this was easy to do and didn't cause any problems except make me question what I was doing with my old room. Next up, I decided to install the overhead ceiling light. On the far wall, I plan on mounting a television, and I want to use this as my computer screen while I'm working in the room so I can keep my laptop and other electronics outside and away from sawdust. I decided to put a tube in the wall to protect any HDMI or power cords that would run through to the TV. I also needed to rewire the room electrically so I can install two side lights on either side of the room. I now needed to re-putty the drywall and cover up all the holes I made while rewiring the room. I then needed to reapply the texture and prime the room to get it ready for painting. Now that I've finished priming the walls, I can begin to paint. I decided to go with three off-white walls and accent with one blue wall. decided that instead of having a blank blue wall behind me, it would be really fun to paint a giant version of my logo, even though it'll end up being covered by French cleats and tools anyway. Now, with the painting and general construction done, it was time to start mounting electronics to the walls. First up was the TV I mentioned earlier. I'll be putting it on a swivel mount so I could rotate it and see it from anywhere in the room. Next, I wanted to create a camera mount that could point in any direction of the room so I can film from several different angles. I used three pieces of aluminum extrusion and a few carriages, one of which would hold the camera gimbal to the center so I could rotate it freely. The other two were attached to the main extrusion and would help the camera move up and down. Before I screwed the camera rig into place, I wanted to make sure it was fully square to the ground. 
To accomplish this, I used a laser level. As you can see here, I was able to align the screws as well as keep them perpendicular to the floor. I used the same leveling technique on the other side as well. I was able to screw in the camera gimbal as well as use a handbrake to loosen and tighten it so I can move it with ease. This camera gimbal allows me to rotate the camera left to right as well as up and down to get a maximum amount of coverage. The final step of the camera rig was to slide on the main extrusion and mount the camera. Got a camera rig up and going. We have the live crew go in the corner. Um, Got to clean up this mess, and we can actually get started building something. At almost every point in this build, I thought I was getting very close to being done, and I immediately found something more that I could do, which is why there's a second part to this video. To everyone who's been involved helping me through this process, to friends and family, a special thank you, because this video would not even be close to possible without you guys and your support. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed part one of this video. Next time I'll be making the tool cleat holders you see behind me, a second camera rig, as well as final touches here and there that really brought this makerspace together. 